Catanduanas is known in the surf world for the majestic waves of Puraran Beach, constantly featured in different publications since the 80s. Gaining buzz from international pro surfers, it's no surprise this spot is on the bucket list for most diehard surfers here and around the world. But of course, there's more to Catanduanas than just a world-class surf spot. And I'm here to discover what that is. When I'm traveling, it's always good to immerse and get to know a place through the eyes of a local. With Ikoi, my guide, and one of the best local surfers around, things were going swell. Masarap yung buhay sa Katanduanas kasi medyo relax. Uh, napansin ko lang kasi sa Manila, yung oras yung inaabol mo. Then dito naman sa isla, ikaw yung inaabol ng oras. Ang buhay dito sa Katanduanas, actually, pag sinabi nating madali, madali talaga yun. Pero pag sinabi nating mahirap, pero gagawan mo ng paraan, makakaraos at makakaraos ka rin kahit paano. Simple living, very peaceful. You can relax a bit, walang ganong traffic and very appealing yung environment dito. Unang-una po sa lahat, Happy Island is Katanduanes. Na paraming tourist spots. May bundok, may falls, may mga beaches na di matao. So, chill sa Katanduanes. Number one visit. I want to discover the different ins and outs the region has to offer. To go beyond the beaches of Puraran and find out what else makes this place so special. As a chef, market visits are always a must for me when I'm out of town. The Virak public market was huge, and this time around, I was on a hunt for some local delicacies to snack on. And being a country that thrives on rice, kakanin is always a staple. Ano ta, Ate? Huh? Sino kray? Bigas na ginini. Ah. Sino it's like fried ground rice. It's quite tasty. Nice texture. Gooey in the inside, crispy in the outside, and then nicely toasted. Ano yung paborito mo dito sa binibenta mo na pwede kong kainin? Ah. It's basically steamed glutinous rice with a uh, sweet coconut sauce. It's simple, good. The coconut sauce complements the rice. Mmm. Nasarap to. Pili is a product that gives the region pride. So I tried some popular snacks they made out of it. Whenever you want to find stuff at a, at a place, just go to the central market because you find everything there. Uh, right now, we're checking out the different assortments of Pili's. We have here sugar-coated Pili, Pili candy. Right now, I am holding a special Mazapan de pili. So basically, it's um, ground pili, grated coconut, yolk, cheese, and milk. And uh, Ate wants to make me try this local tableya. So it's on the sweet side. It's not that bitter. You can use this for hot chocolate, champurado. You can use this in like marinades also. Actually, let's make that later. With Majestic's powerful sets not sinking in today, Ikoi wanted to check out Magnesia del Sur to see if there were waves. Just 20 minutes away from Vera, Kurip Das is actually the nearest and easiest surf spot to get to from the city. Despite being off-season, there were gentle knee-high waves in sparse sets, so I still surfed even if all I had was my shortboard. The struggle was real. These waves would have been fun on a longboard, but on a shortboard, things got challenging. So Ikoi took us to this spot called Magnesia. When we got there, complete opposite of Majestic, super mellow, waist to sometimes uh, chest high waves. Yung waves sa Magnesia pag umagana, sobrang ganda. Isang mahabang kaluwa na siguro minsan nagdo double overhead. We were on a short board, heat up to my ming. <laughs> you know, I guess it takes an advanced surfer to ride those kind of waves with a short board, and Ikoi being Ikoi just took off easy. Ah, uh, napansin ko lang kay Chef JP nung pag surf sa Magnesia, uh, medyo kabalik tara na majestic. Sobrang liit at medyo mahina yung tulak. Kaya nairapan magpadel. Kailangan kasi ng ano eh. 
Maraming pa dahil at kailangan mo rin basahin yung alon. Like, the lineup was all to ourselves. Caught nothing. But it was a good learning experience again. It just goes to show that marami pa talaga tayong kakainin na bigas para lang maging isang average surfer. And I learned about angling the board and, you know, reading the wave and pumping the board. You know, dami pa talaga. There's so much to it. And uh, it's good. I mean, frustrating, but hey, let's just be better next time then. On the mountainside drive out towards the capital city, we ran into a group of local skaters carving their way down. Surfing and longboarding go hand in hand. You need the same balance, dedication, and cadence. Nauna yung downhill before ako mag-surf. And then, naisip ko na pag di kami pwede mag-skate, yung laging routine, pag walang alon, downhill, pag walang downhill, surfing. Going full speed and downhill, a mountain gives that same rush you get on the drop of an epic wave. With these steep rides right in their backyard, it's no surprise they turn to some downhill stoke when the waves are not pumping. I've always enjoyed cruising. But skating downhill is a whole different beast. Being self-taught, these guys had guts. I started playing longboard two years ago. I liked the longboarding because it's different the thrill and it's nice to see our community. We want to be more active and more active so that it's better. The Bicol region is known for its spicy food and coconut milk. Ask any Filipino about Bicol Express and Line, and I'm 100% sure they've had it. But what about Tinilmok? I've never tried it or heard about it, so it was going to be a first on this trip. Meeting Tita Manette and trying her Tinilmok was a very pleasant surprise. Hello, JP. Thank nice you for having you. us over here at your house. Yeah, it's my honor. So, all right, what are we making tonight? We're going to cook our native tinilmo. Tinilmo. Yung dish na to, dito niya nang originate sa Birak. Wala pa sa pagkabata ko, nagisnan ko na ang lutong ganito. Mm -hmm. So, siguro talagang native ng aming ano, mm -hmm. lugar. Dahil natutunan ko rin ito sa mga lolo, okay. isa sa mga specialty ng Bicol na dapat laging present sa table, parang ganun. Ah. So yeah, I'm super excited to try this dish. I've never encountered a dish like this. So what is the first process? I prepare yung shrimp. Mm -hmm. I separate ang meat niya from the head. But then, yung part ng head, dapat mm. idikdikin. Okay, or so... In, so hanggang maging so, fine, fine. fine. Dahil meron siyang mga parang hard na part, then this one, dapat chop siya. Okay. okay. Onions, mm -hmm. mints, dapat hindi chop. Sige. Yung talagang original recipe nito, dapat medyo may amoy na yung shrimp. Okay. Kasi siyang nag-aad pa siya ng flavor. So, ano, anong ginagawa mo? Huwag mo nilagay sa fridge. Pag nakita mo siyang medyo redis na siya, mm -hmm. then hindi na siya fresh. And then some of this yerba buena. It's not like your, yung mint na normal mint na. Mm -mm. It's sort of like para may pag watercress na. Mm -mm. Only a little of this chili. Mint should be chopped finely. And then the buko. Gano'ng karami po? Lahat. Lahat? Kasi ang ratio talaga niyan is harimbawa, one cup ang shrimps, uh -huh. nasa four cups ang weighted. So, mahabol lang yung shrimps. Yes. While mixing it, we put some pepper. Ah, uh, wala siyang vinegar, wala siyang no, calamansi. No, only salt and pepper. Wow. Kasi sobra nang malasa yung shrimp, mm -hmm. yung yerba buena. Mm -hmm. This is how to wrap the ano. Oh. Yan, dito, pipigilan ng ganon. Mm -hmm. Oh, God. Ano yan, yan. Tapos, ganon. Mm -hmm. Yan, ganon. Tapos, iboboil na natin ito. So, we just added a uh, half a cup of water for it to steam the parcels and then cook it over low fire, 10 to 15 minutes. All right, check that in. Wow, a 
At the beginning, I was like, uh, what is this dish? A bit weird. And then when it was cooked and then when we had it, boom, like, wow. I've never tasted like a flavor profile and a texture like that. Mm. Mm. Don't, I don't like it. I love, love it. it. Wow. <laughs> Mm. I feel happy. <laughs> yes, I'm just honored that I, at least I, I made it perfect for you. <laughs> it was very good, um, authentic, and uh, done with so much heart. Coming in with no expectations, the tinulmuk blew me away. When pounded and mixed in with the prawn heads, the coconut meat tasted like seafood. It tasted deceptively like crab meat. It's a reminder that there's still so much to learn about when it comes to Filipino food, and we've barely scratched the surface. While most families were celebrating, the Bicol region braced itself for Nina, the strongest typhoon to devastate Philippine shores since Yolanda in 06. Big storms are common in Catinduanes because of its proximity to the Pacific Ocean. A seaside community that was hit hardest last December. I was curious about how the people here cope with the harsh conditions that come so consistently. They worry and there's still that sense of fear, but at the end of the day, they know they have to power through to pick themselves back up. Buti na lang sobrang bilis ng bagyo, kundi siguro maraming bahay, maraming puno, maraming mga halaman ang nasira. On this Pacific side, so dumaan siya dyan, kaya very strong talaga yung tama ng bagyo dito sa Barangay Karorian. Nabigla lahat ng mga tao kasi the day before dumaan yung bagyo, medyo maganda pa yung panahon, mainit pa. So pagdating ng hapon, ayan na yung bagyo. Eh, hindi namin inaasahan na ganito talaga kalakas yung impact ng bagyo. Kasi yung pinagkukunan nila ng ikabubuhay, aras nawasak lahat. Isa ito sa mostly affected na barangay. And you could just imagine for a wind sustaining almost 200 kilometers per hour, medyo malakas na talaga siya. And yung effect nun sa mga bata, not just on their houses, but also dun sa emotional effect sa kanila, talagang malaki. Nung magkataon na December siya, Masaya kami kahit ganun yung nangyari kasi alam namin na walang tahanan, na walang bigas. Nakadalasan kapag bagyod kasi dito, asahan muna na may pamilyang hindi kakain sa araw na yan. Swerte pa rin kami kasi nagkataon na meron nga kaming naipon. Just hearing their stories about the storm made me want to do something special for them. From the municipality, we drove to Barangay Karoyan, which is like a 45-minute drive dirt road, finally grab it. You can really see the difference slowly changing when, when you see the trees with no leaves. Like everything is almost brown. It was like entering a quaint village that had a lot of character, that had a lot of soul. Just by, you know, the people, they're smiling still, they're happy to have us. We were given the chance to cook for some kids at the public school. The kitchen we were in was a makeshift hut by the beach, but it had the bare necessities that Junjun and I could work with. I knew we were cooking mostly for kids, so I wanted to do a Chinese-Filipino meal that was on the sweet side. So we're here at Barangay Karorian, Catanduanes. We're here to cook for the families that were deeply affected by the typhoonina. Everything we bought is from their own market. Uh, everything is local. I'm excited, you know, I want to touch their hearts through food. I think I brought the right chef with me. Junjun cooks with a lot of heart. Very, very organized guy. Um, he prepared everything. Oh, I feel that he's very excited also. So cheesy as it may sound, but when you do it with care, the dish just becomes really better. This afternoon, I want to make them a simple longanisa fried rice. It's going to be really good. I hope the best fried rice that they ever tasted. So this is a coconut longanisa salted fish alamang fried rice. 
And then when you make fried rice, make sure that your rice is dry or yung one day old na kanin. Yung, yung, yung bahaw, yan. Lagyan ko lang ng konting soy sauce dahil yung sinangag natin medyo maputla yung kulay niya. So I am breading the pork chops. Uh, we have here the egg batter mixture and then the flour with a little bit of grated coconut. So if you've noticed, I'm using two hands. This is the wet mixture, putting it here, and I'm gonna mix it with my right hand. It's important to keep it separate because it's gonna be so sloppy. And then just make sure to shake off the excess flour. And then later on, we'll deep fry it. Sweet and sour yung ginagawa natin. So kung sweet and sour, kailangan yun lang sa sweet and sour. Una talaga gisa mo yung bawang. Tapos sibuyas. Pagkatapos gisa mo yung bell pepper. Tapos yung mga yung ketchup, yung suka. Halo na. Halo. Oh. Yung pagloto ni Chef, na ano ko sa kanya na kahit iba-iba yung, yung flavor ng pagkain, pag pinagmix mo siya, may kakaibang twist doon sa pagkain. Yung cacao, pwede pala yung sa karne, ganun. Yung kaya yung nangalo ka pag pagluto, cacao. O, oh, lagyan ko konti pa. Um, paano yan? Yeah. Palasa? Oo. Oh. Ngayon, nakita ko yung cacao sa market. So, come on. Malasa, di ba? Bagay yan dito. Ngayon, I'm gonna put... Ngayon, nilagay ko dalawa na. I'm gonna put a little bit of cacao, not too much. Kasi ayaw ko ma-overpower yung, yung sauce ng cacao. Maroon sila kung magluto niyan, pero ibang ano din naman yung Hindi. cacao, walang cacao. Oo. Oh. And then for dessert, Junjun and I will cook some kamote Q with maybe grated coconut and chili. And then we have ice cream over there in the refrigerator that will serve for the kids. Hello! Kainan na! Good afternoon. Ako po si Chef JP. Taga Bacolod ako. Isa akong kusinero na nagtatrabaho sa Maynila. Narinig namin na tinamaan kayo ng bagyo. Kaya um, nandito kami para magtulong ng konti kahit papano. Tapos uh, tinuro ko na lahat kay kagawad Yasmin kung paano itong gagawin. Kaya tikman nyo. Tapos baka one of these days si Ate Hasmin naman yung magluluto para sa inyo. O oh, sige, pila-pila na. So, nagluto kami. Fried rice, baboy. Ali na kayo. Huwag na kayo mahiya. Ali na kayo. Kainan na. It felt really great feeding the kids. It felt amazing that we made their day in a way. And I guess they're not used to service. They're not used to people cooking for them and serving them. Like, these kids were like... When I would go up to them and give them ice cream or water, they were like, what is he doing? What is this? But I just wanted to make them feel that way, even just for one afternoon, because they're kids and they live far, far away. I mean, there's no signal there. The roads are not even paved. And you know, this is the real essence of serving, serving without any payment or any reward, just really just giving. And today I felt the maximum level of giving, even though I just cooked three dishes. You know, it was very sincere. It was very meaningful. Salamat. <laughs> just the joy in these kids' eyes. You know, they're kids. They're just so happy. The Bayanian spirit is still alive here. They care for each other and help. They share even if they barely have enough. They still practice compassion and mindfulness, qualities that are so integral to coexisting in this world when pride and blind ambition get in the way. Actually, sir, talagang nagsisikap kami kahit maraming pagsubok. Yung tourism dito sa Barangay Karurian, madevelop talaga na makatulong sa aming mga kabarangay. Kasi yung natural na pinagkukunan namin ng ikabubuhay, maghihintay pa kami na siguro 3 to 5 years. We can't just live on our own, so we really have to be involved in helping others. Naging active talaga ako bilang community volunteer mula nung manalasa si Bagyong Lina. 
Kasi doon ko na-realize na, ba't ako uupo? Kung meron naman akong magagawa. Kaya yun na yun yun. Simula noon, parang naano na ako na, sige, kung kaya ko, tutulong at tutulong na talaga ako. So the situation now, I think, kasi most of the katandunganans naman are resilient in a way. Dating tawag sa katandunganans is actually the land of the howling winds. So talagang sanay kami na tinatamaan kami ng bagyo. But still, kailangan pa rin talaga ng tulong from the outside. A lot of families lost their homes, their crops, and in effect, their livelihood. They still need all the help they can get. How can we help those who are most in need? And how can we make helping out sustainable? I mean, one, one gesture is great. What if you can sustain that? You can really change their lives. Today, we touch their hearts. But I think the next step, if we want to really help, is to equip them with some skills, say, some skills in the kitchen. That's what you call sustainable development. Yes, did I feel great? Yes. Was it fulfilling? Yes. But is it enough? I don't think so. I was lucky I was given the chance to cook for them, to show that I care in my own little way. Helping out doesn't always need to be grand or complicated. If you can give your time and effort or share some of your talents and skills, that can go a long way. Seeing the situation here made me realize that there is so much that can still be done. Let's find our own ways to help out.